in our initial formulation of the 1D steady conduction problem, we mentioned boundary conditions in that we mentioned that the boundary conditions had been given to us and we stated what they were specified as. They were specified as boundary conditions on the inside and the outside of the wall. But we didn't go into any discussion of the types of boundary conditions or how we treat them in the formulation. This video will start with an overview of the types of boundary conditions and then a deeper dive into the application of type 1 boundary conditions in the 1D case. So consider the three types. There are Dirichlet, also called type 1, Neumann, also called type 2, natural or flux. The term natural arises out of the civil engineering discipline. The term flux arises primarily out of the fluid dynamic simulation. It's also seen in aerospace and in any discipline that in, involves fields, so electromagnetics would also discuss flux boundary conditions. The Robin boundary conditions are a mix um, of type 2 and type 1, thus the name, and they're also called type 3. So Dirichlet boundary conditions, they're specified as a value of the unknown at the boundary. In the case of the 1D conduction problem, we were given an inside temperature and an outside temperature at the edge of the wall, displayed here as T at X of zero and T at X of L. T is the unknown that we're looking for. Neumann boundary conditions are given as a derivative of the unknown or the, the function that we're looking for at the boundary. So one example is that you could have the derivative of temperature with respect to X as being a constant. It could in fact be zero, but it is given as some constant or some known function. Robin boundary conditions, these are the mixed boundary conditions. They are also specified as a derivative of the unknown, but that derivative is no longer equal to a known function as it was for the Neumann boundary conditions. In this case, the derivative is equal to a function of the unknown that you're looking for and a known value. So one example from heat transfer is that the change of temperature with respect to X can be equal to the heat transfer coefficient times the temperature right there at the wall minus a temperature that's far away, but a known value, T ambient is a known value. So the boundary conditions are applied after you create the A matrix because they, they require that you modify the A matrix in some way to account for the boundary conditions. They're always applied in reverse order. You apply type 3, type 2, and type 1. For the initial simulation, we had only type 1. And for this video, we'll focus on the type 1 and work with type 2 and type 3 later in the term when they naturally come into the problem. Let's look at how we apply the type 1 boundary conditions in the 1D case. Let's take as our example a small system Four nodes, numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the global numbering scheme. Three elements. From this, we can build out the matrix system, AIJ, TJ equals BI. We've seen how to do this in previous videos. When we do this, we will have our four unknown temperatures, and we will have our four known right-hand side values. Now they may be zero, but they are all known. As we look at the AIJ matrix, we'll see that from element one, we will have a sub-matrix of four values based on the weight and basis functions at the two nodes. Similarly, we will get a sub-matrix from element two and finally, a submatrix from element three. As we look at this system, we know that we are going to do a matrix vector product so that for T1, we have A1 times A2. We also know that that will have to equal T at X equals zero. Likewise, 
the last equation of the system will have to equal t at x equals l. So here's our system. To satisfy the boundary conditions, there are two equations that we need to satisfy. a11 times t1 plus a12 times t2 has to be equal to t at x equals 0. a43 times t3 plus a44 at t4 has to be equal to t at x equals l. In order to satisfy these and make these equations correct, we can do the following. If we zero out the first row of the A matrix, setting A11 equal to 1 and B1 equal to T at X equals 0, then we will have T1 is equal to T at X equals 0. If we zero out the last row of the system, set A44, basically set the value on the diagonal equal to 1, set the right-hand side equal to t at x equals l, then we will satisfy the boundary condition and t4 will be equal to t at x equals l. So this is what the system looks like. And in MATLAB, we have a set of six instructions. When you look at the code, you can see that just after the A matrix has been formed, there's a section that says apply boundary conditions. In the 1D conduction problem, we only have type 1 boundary conditions. And these six lines of code are stated there just before you solve the system. As we continue through the term, we will see the type 2 and type 3 boundary conditions. And furthermore, we will extend this presentation to cover two dimensions and higher dimensions.